Now let's discuss St. John Rivers' character. Now in many ways, St. John Rivers is a foil to Mr. Rochester. In other words, he reveals the deficiencies in Mr. Rochester's character, but conversely, Mr. Rochester's character reveals the deficiencies in his character. Now, whilst Mr. Rochester is very fiery, very hot-tempered, but also someone who follows his impulses and his feelings, indeed, it's actually his impulses that lead him to do some immoral things that God ultimately punishes him for, St. John Rivers is the complete opposite. He's someone who's extremely austere with himself to the extent that even if he was in love with Miss Oliver, he wanted to marry Jane Eyre because on paper that's what a biblical missionary should do, meaning that they probably would have a very loveless marriage filled with just pure your duty and of course he tries to get Jane to marry him also they ultimately realize that they are cousins he tries to get her to marry him but she ultimately rejects it in terms of the fact that they would really be in a loveless marriage characterized only by duty and also she was still in love with Mr. Rochester now as you can see behind me I've created the quotations that you need to bear in mind when revising for St. John Rivers's character the first quotation to remember when you're revising for his character is how he's described. He's actually described as being far more handsome and more typically good looking than actually Mr. Rochester who appears very rugged and not conventionally handsome. He is described as tall, fair, with blue eyes and a Grecian profile and the adjectives tall, fair and of course even Grecian really characterise his appearance as actually very handsome in contrast to Mr. Rochester who's very dark, very stern, even older in his appearance. The second quotation to remember with his character is how he's described. So even if he's very handsome, he has an austere and despotic nature. Despotic means like he's a very harsh person and almost someone who strives to control people, especially the women in his lives. He strives, of course, to control Jane and to tell her what to do, i.e. marry him. Now, the word level analysis you want to do here is the assonance of a an an, austere, and a nature, okay? And of course, what this emphasizes is how he follows just religious doctrine almost to a fault, and he doesn't do it purely because it's the right thing to do. He does it because that's what he's expected by duty to follow. Now, the third quotation to remember for St. John Rivers' character is when it states, he's firm, faithful, and devoted, full of energy and zeal and truth. Now, here, there's some word level analysis to do. So you've got the alliteration of firm and faithful, showing that he's really focused on religion, but also focused to an extent on ambition in terms of how he wants to stand out in religion. So part of his focus on religion isn't so much just because he wants to be really religious. His religious zeal might also be for him to gain some kind of power in that area. The other key word level analysis to do for this quotation is the listing. So full of energy, comma, and zeal and truth. And this one actually is syndentic listing because there is the um, continuous conjunction and, and, and. Now, the other key quotation to bear in mind for his character is the declarative sentence, God and nature intended you for a missionary's wife. Now, this is when he tells Jane that out of duty, she should marry him. That's what is uh, ordained for them in uh, God's eyes. And here, you want to focus on the structural point that this is a declarative sentence, and he's stating that she was intended to be his wife. Now, the final quotation is when he tries to forcefully get Jane to marry him. He states, you shall be mine, I claim you. And of course, he takes a very typical Victorian male attitude towards women, towards seeing women as property. Jane doesn't get a say in whether she wants to marry him. He's the one that's pronounced that they are going to get married. Of course, Jane rallies against this and ultimately rejects this. Now, in this quotation, the word level analysis you want to do is a repetition of you. So you shall be mine and I shall claim you. And of course, the declarative sentence, mine. And here, again, this emphasizes just how he sees Jane in a very conventional way, which is, of course, in contrast to Mr. Rochester, who sees Jane as someone who is independent and also very much intellectual. And of course, Jane opts for Mr. Rochester, who she genuinely loves more, and whilst she does not love Mr. Rivers. So that's it when it comes to revising for the character of Mr. Rivers.